This will be the last case that we'll consider when the fee growth is initialized. In this case, we will say that both tick i lower and tick i upper are initialized. And again, we will calculate fk minus f0 to calculate the fee growth inside these two ticks. Since the two ticks are initialized, we'll label them as fl and fu. fl will be the f out of i lower at time t0. And likewise, fu will be the f out of tick i upper at time t0. Let's consider the case when a position is created when the current tick i of c is less than tick i lower. So again, as a reminder, tick i lower and tick i upper are initialized. Tick i lower is initialized to fl, and tick i upper is initialized to fu. At time t0, let's say that the fee growth is over here. At time t1, the fee growth crosses above tick i lower, and at time t2, the fee growth is over here. And at this point, we want to calculate the fee growth inside tick i lower and i upper. Now to do this, we'll need to calculate two values, f0 and f2. Let's start with f0. So here's the equation that we'll need to use. And again, this is because the current tick i of c at time t0 will be over here, below tick i lower. So we'll need to calculate this equation. This is equal to f out of i lower is equal to, well, it's initialized to fl, so this is equal to fl. And likewise, f out of i upper is initialized to fu. Okay, next, let's calculate f2. At time t2, the current tick i of c is in between tick i lower and i upper. And this is the equation that we will need to calculate. This is equal to fg2 is equal to fg2. How about f out of i lower? Well, since at time t1, the phi growth crossed over tick i lower, so we apply the update rule to phi growth of i lower, and we get that the f out of i lower is now equal to fg1 minus fl. How about f out of i upper? Well, it has not changed, so it's still equal to fu. And we're now ready to calculate f2 minus f0, and again, this will give us the phi growth inside tick i lower and tick i upper. f2 is equal to this thing over here, and this part is equal to f0. From here, we can see that fl and fu cancels out with this fl and fu. And we're simply left with fg2 minus fg1. Okay, and looking at the graph, we can see that the phi growth inside these two tick is the difference of the height fg2 and fg1. So this equation and this graph matches. Okay, let's move on. For the next case, let's calculate phi growth inside when the current tick i of c is in between tick i lower and i upper. So at time t0, we have phi growth in between the two ticks i lower and i upper. At time t1, it crosses above tick i upper, and at time t2, the phi growth is over here. We want to calculate phi growth inside tick i lower and i upper at time t2. To begin with, we again calculate f0. Since at time t0, the current tick will be in between these two ticks i lower and i upper, this is the equation that we will need to use. This is equal to fg0 f out of i lower will be initialized to fl, and f out of i upper is initialized to fu. How about at time t2? Well, this is the equation that we will need to use. And this is equal to, if you look at over here, we can see that at time t1, the phi growth crossed above tick i upper. So at time t2, f out of i upper will be equal to fg1 minus fu, and f out of i lower will be equal to fl. Okay, we're now ready to calculate f2 minus f0. Here is f2, and here is f0. Again, we can see that the fu and the fl terms cancel out with the fl and the fu terms inside here. And we get that f2 minus f0 is equal to fg1 minus fg0. And again, looking at the picture, the phi growth inside these two ticks are the difference between fg1 and fg0. So this equation matches with this picture. Okay, for the final case, consider the case when the current tick i of c is greater than tick i upper when this position of tick i lower and i upper is initialized. So at this point, the current tick i of c will be above tick i upper. Here's phi growth at time t0, and let's say at time t1, it crosses below tick i upper, and at time t2, the phi growth is in between tick i lower and i upper. To calculate the phi growth inside this position, we'll start by calculating f0, the phi growth inside at time t0. So this is equal to, here's the equation that we'll need to use. And again, we're using this equation because at time t0, the current tick i of c is above tick i upper. The first part, f out of i upper, is initialized to fu. The second part, f out of i lower, is initialized to fl. 
Okay, let's move on to F2. Phi growth inside at time T2. And again, at time T2, the phi growth is in between the two ticks, I lower and I upper. Here's the equation that we need to use. And this is equal to FG2 is equal to FG2. F alpha by lower has not changed, so it still equals FL. And F alpha by upper is equal to this term. This is because at time T1, the phi growth crossed below tick I upper, so we need to apply the update rule for F out. What we do is take the phi growth and then minus it with the previous F out. The previous F out is FU, so we get FG1 minus FU. Okay, we're now ready to calculate F2 minus F0, and again, this will give us the phi growth inside this position. Here's F2, and here's F0. The FL and the FU terms cancel out, and we're left with FG2 minus FG1. And again, looking at the graph, we can see that the phi growth inside this position is the difference between FG2 minus FG1. That completes the calculation for phi growth inside for all cases, whether tick I lower and or tick I upper is initialized or not. In the next video, we'll summarize what we've calculated so far.